Hello everybody, my name is Oluwale Godwin and welcome back to Emoji Economics. If this is the first time you are seeing one of our classes, please make sure you attend to the end of it. If you like it, please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications by hitting the bell button. And let us come straight to what we are to talk about today. So today we'll be talking about the cross price elasticity of demand. Cross price elasticity of demand. So basically cross price elasticity of demand is trying to tell you uh, the relationship that exists between two different goods so whether they are substitute whether they are complement or not so that's what the cped is trying to tell you now elasticity of demand itself what does it mean you know um, you see there are, there are many factors that affect demand so for you it could be your income it could be the price of the commodity so which is what i've listed here so it could be the price of the products could be the price of related products could be your income it could be your taste and it could be festive period of course so um this is january 2021 last year you know christmas and all of that so there were stuff that people bought you know christmas trees uh, christmas cards all of those you don't buy those things in march it don't make any sense so festive period affects you know your demand for all of those things as well as other people's so you see elastic of demand is simply telling you the degree of responsiveness of uh, the quantity demand of a product to the factors affecting its demand so that is what elasticity is basically telling you so elasticity of demand i should come again Elasticity of demand is simply the degree of responsiveness of the quantity demanded of a product to a change in the factors affecting its demand, basically. So now that is why we have price elasticity of demand. So there are three types of elasticities right now uh, from what I've known so far. So over time, more should come. I don't know. So um, first, we have the price elasticity of demand. So that is just telling you the degree of responsiveness of the quantity demanded of a product to its price. No, price is a factor. You understand? Price is one of the factors that affects demand. Now, that is why you also have income elasticity of demand. So, income is another factor that affects the demand of a product. All right. So, and income elasticity of demand is trying to tell you the um, degree of responsiveness of the quantity demand of a product to the income of consumers. You understand? So, that is the way it goes. Then you have cross price elasticity because we are talking about two goods now. Cross price elasticity. So, that is telling you the degree of, the degree of responsiveness of uh, the quantity demanded of a product to the price of another product. You understand? So the price of another product rose. The price of so that is you know so that is where this comes in this the um, B part. So the price of uh, related product. Okay. So if the price of another product rises, so with the quantity demanded with the demand of this particular product rise or fall, you know, and all of that. So that is what cross price elasticity of demand is telling you. So over time, we should be having something like taste elasticity of demand. I've not come across it, but since taste is also a part of the factors affecting demand so you know some people might be able to come up with something and start calculating a lot of things so taste elasticity of demand probably should have festivity elasticity of demand so demand you know as a result of festive periods you know, all of those things so any um, any factor of demand that you can think of you understand can be expressed in terms of elasticity so that is um that's what that's that's um about that so now uh the types of elasticity of demand i've explained that i've explained uh this one price elasticity of demand so which is ped P E D. All right, price that's still demand. Cross price. So I have it that because this is what we're talking about in this video. That's C P E D. Okay, income that's still demand. Sometimes you can just call R E D. So now, what is price that's still demand? So it just tells us the relation. What is cross price that's still demand? Sorry. So that's that just tells us the relationship between two goods. Now, how do we calculate how do we calculate that's still demand in the first place? So it is simply the percentage change in quantity demanded of a product. Um, divided by the percentage change in price, right? So basically, I would just say that elasticity of demand is the percentage change in the quantity demanded of a product divided by the percentage change in any of the factors I want to talk about. So not necessarily the price. So because what we are talking about here is cross price elasticity of demand, so it's going to be the percentage change in the quantity demanded of good Y, like a different good, divided by the percentage change in the price of good X. So as you, call, you can call them A and B, that is, percentage change in the quantity demanded of good A as a result of the percentage change in the price of good B. So just give them a notation that makes us to realize that you are talking about two different goods. So that is that. Now I have graphs up here, you know, economics and graphs, there's, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can't escape it once you are in economics. Graphs help to put things in perspective, they, make to, they, they help in making explanations easier and understanding, you know, pretty much simple. Alright, so here we have a downward sloping demand curve, which is basically what many of you are used to. But I want to note something that instead of you just having Q and P on this on this uh, respective axis, so you are having something different. So there's P subscript X, which is telling you, okay, this is the price of good X. I'm trying to make a difference right now. And there's Q subscript Y, which is trying to tell us that this is quantity demanded of Y. 
You understand? So now, if this particular graph is talking about two different products, price of group X, quantity demanded of uh, quantity demanded of group Y, or if you are going to just decide to call it demand of group Y, then price of group X, demand of group Y, and price of group X, demand of group Y. So now, what do these three mean? What do these three curves mean? Now look at it. We have this curve is downward sloping. So we have when the price of when the price of group X was high here, what was the quantity demanded of what was the demand for group Y? This was it. And when the price of good X fell, what happened to the quantity of good Y? Uh, the yeah, quantity of good Y is increased. So now what's that telling us? A reduction in the price of good X is leading to an increase in the demand for good Y. What is the relationship between those two? A reduction in the price of good X is leading to an increase in the demand for good Y. Now let us try to put this in perspective. So you have there is a reduction in price of good X. And that is leading to an increase in the demand for good buy. Of course, it wasn't the price of good buy that changed. So the price, the price of good buy is constant. So I could call that this. I could just denote as something like this. The price of good buy is constant. It wasn't the price that it was the price of X that changed. And of course, if the price of good X changes by the basic law of demand, we expect that there will be an increase in the quantity of good X. So see where I started from. The price of good Y exposed, it led to an increase in the quantity of good Y. But that is not the only thing that this graph is trying to tell us. Okay, so what we also have to understand is that price of good X didn't change. Uh, price of good Y didn't change, so it is constantly a little bit that way. But because the price of good X has reduced from the law of demand, you know, an increase in the price of the commodity leads to a reduction in the quantity demand of the commodity, other things being equal, that's very important for you to note. And um, a reduction in the price of the commodity leads to an increase in the quantity demanded of that commodity. So which is what's happening here. So at the end of the day, we are talking about the quantities. So the quantity of this increase, the quantity of this increase. So what type of goods are they? Complement, yeah, complement. Complements are goods that are consumed together. I believe you get that. So it's either you increase the amount of, it's either you increase the amount um, together or you reduce the amount together. So you com you know, so a complement are like that. So that is why by the time you calculate your cross price elasticity of demand, doing the percentage and all of that, you'll be having a negative answer. Okay, look at what I'm trying to say. So we have uh, once it's how to calculate uh, elastic the cross price elasticity, this which is the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. So now you have percentage change, uh, percentage uh, uh, percentage change in quantity demand in the, um, the demand okay in the demand of um, y uh, divided by the percentage change no let me let me put this this way divided by the percentage change in the price of x now the price of x what happens to it is reduced so if it is reducing that's a minus like a negative change it is reducing and the price and the quantity of quantity demanded of good y what happened to it it increased so that is a positive change as a positive change. So at the end of the day, you are getting your final answer plus and minus will eventually give you a minus. So this will be plus 5 percent divided by minus 1 percent. So at the end of the day, your answer will be a minus. So when you're calculating the cross price elasticity of uh, products, if your answer is negative, it simply means the goods are complement from what I've explained before. Because this will make this will lead to an increase in the uh in the uh, quantity demanded or an increase in the demand of the two goods that we're talking about. Okay, so that's that about that. Now let's talk about the other curve. Let's talk about the other curve. So we have in this particular case an increase in the price of X leading to an increase in the uh, demand for Y. An increase in the price of X leading to an increase in the demand for Y. So what kind of products are they? What kind of products are they? So let me get my so in this case, in this case, so we just note this first, there's an increase in the price of X leading to an increase in the demand for good Y. All right, so it wasn't the price of good Y that changed, so that is constant, the price of good Y is constant. Then, of course, what's an increase in the price of X from the law of demand will lead to a reduction in the quantity demanded of X. If by increasing the quantity of, if by increasing the price of a product is leading to an increase in the quantity of another product, all right, so that simply means we are already consuming less of the product whose price has risen. Now, in that case, Look at it, there is a reduction in the quantity demanded of good X and there is an increase in the uh, demand for good Y. So what kind of goods are these? Because this seems to, this seems to be in competitive demand for me. Okay, because 
Immediately I started to immediately I started increasing my consumption of good Y. I, I, I reduce my consumption of good X. So that is that means these two goods are substitutes. Yeah, they are substitutes. So one is becoming more expensive for me, and I'm like, okay, uh, what's the problem? I can just go and get this other commodity. So I'm reducing the uh, my consumption of one particular good, and I am already shifting my demand to another product. So they are, they are substitutes. I don't consume them together. Yeah, they are in competitive demand. Now, what is going to be um, what sign is the cross price elastic going to have? So uh, we, we come back to the formula, uh, percentage change in that rest again. No. Now the percentage change in price in price uh, price is the denominator. No, let me just write it. Uh, percentage change in quantity of y divided by the percentage change in price of x. All right. So now the price increased, which is a positive change, and the quantity of the other commodity also increases, which is a positive change. So plus and plus. So at the end of the day. We are going to be having a plus whatever. Now, if this were if this increased by one percent and this increased by five percent, we have plus five percent divided by plus one percent, and that's going to give us plus five. All right. So plus. Now the plus is telling us that if goods are substitutes, the uh, cost price elasticity is going to be positive. It's going to be positive. It's going to be plus something, plus a value and whatever, whatever. Now we have the third graph. We have the third graph. Alright, so in this particular graph, the price is changing, but nothing is happening, nothing is happening to the quantity of the other product. So what does that tell us? Now, there is an increase in the price of X, but there is nothing that is happening to Y. Now, all these things that I've explained, you could take them the other way around. So this is an increase, this is a reduction here. So you can, you can say an increase, an increase here will lead to a reduction here. This is an increase, an increase, so you can, the other way around, put the other way around, this will lead to a decrease. So if you say a decrease here, so it's a little decrease here. Now this is an increase. If price should reduce as well, quantity is not changing. So what kind of goods are they? They are trying to they are trying to look at good X, good Y. What kind of goods are they? Now come from this formula once again. Percentage change in whatever. So percentage change in price. Now price is increasing, right? Which is a plus, but the demand for good Y is not changing. Okay. So which means the change here is zero. Okay. Did you understand that? Price here, price here is increasing, that is a positive change. But the demand for good buy is not changing, so it is zero. So at the end of the day, we'll be having, so if us, instead of just this, we'll be having the percentage change in demand for Y is zero divided by whatever way. Uh, let's say this one changed by 5%, 5%. So at the end of the day, your answer is going to be zero. Now, if your answer is zero, what does that mean? It simply means that the changes in the price of good X not affecting uh, the demand for good Y simply means that these goods don't have any relationship. Yeah, there is no relationship, they are not related. So it's like it's like trying to check the price of pencils to the demand for skirts. The price of pencils to the demand for skirts. So basically, I don't think I am trying to look for a, a relationship, although a relationship, a relationship might exist theoretically, but practically, what common sense is in and the uh, the change in price of a pencil to the demand for skirt. So if the if there is an increase in the price of pencils, how should that affect the demand for skirt? And if there is a reduction in the price of pencils, how should that affect the demand for skirt? Okay, so this simply means that practically that there is no relationship whatsoever between the two goods. So when the cross price elasticity is zero, it simply means no relationship. When it is negative, which is what we have here, it simply means there is a um, the goods are complement, and if it is Positive, the line in the markup is of looking. It simply means that the goods are substitute. All right, so I believe you enjoyed this video. If you really did, please click on the subscribe button. You see a bell appear immediately after you click on the subscribe button. Click on that bell too to get to get notified whenever we make new classes available. I'll be talking about income and state of demand shortly. Maybe today, maybe not. All right, so make sure you turn on notifications to do that. And please tell your friends about this channel. We really want you guys to understand economics. I went through a difficult time in school understanding economics, but you shouldn't have a difficult time. And that's why we are here for you. See you next time.